So uh, KC-46 is currently the Air Force's newest uh, and latest and greatest tanker. Um, AR as a whole is one of the great capabilities of the Air Force, right? So it's what differentiates us from most of the other Air Forces all throughout the world. When having that tactical capability to put our assets downrange anywhere at any point, uh, even if we're not necessarily geographically located there, uh, is a huge war fighting capability and something that truly makes uh, our Air Force great. This is the boom. And so you have, we call it the, uh, the H tail, if you will. You have your rudders and your elevators for the boom. And then the entire length uh, of it, this is what drops down and comes into the air refueling envelope. Uh, there's a green tube that comes out of the middle of it. That's the, the telescope tube. That's what extends and retracts. And that's what houses the nozzle that uh, mates up with the, the receiver airplane to give them the gas required to accomplish the mission. So aero refueling is one of the core components of our Air Force. It allows our aircraft that don't have that much fuel to fly for much longer durations. Well, as a fighter pilot uh, and someone who appreciates the uh, opportunities that extra gas provides me, you know, the tanker fleet is the backbone of the United States Air Force, but also the multi-services to get us to and from the fight. It's nice to have a Chevron right next door where they can pop over, refill, uh, and continue that test mission. Air refueling frequently takes place uh, at night, which is when there's a large operational need. Uh, it almost always happens when there's bad weather in the area. The feeling when you're flying and you're connected to another plane and you're right in the heart of the envelope or exactly where you're supposed to be, that it, it feels like nothing else. It's so much fun. I, I feel a strong sense of responsibility that we take aircraft to the edges of the envelope and in the worst case conditions because I want the combat Air Force pilots and multi-service pilots to be confident that if they're flying behind a tanker, that a test pilot has been there in a much worse case condition than they have been so they can have high confidence in what they're about to do. We are looking at prototype cameras for the new RVS 2.0 on KC-46. Well, we're now on a remote vision system and what those do is there's a three camera to give us perspective. There's two of them up here. And so that's what gives us the, the window view, if you will, into the boom envelope so we can watch the receiver move around. And that's what gives us our depth perception as well. Um, there are so many people, both on the jet and on the ground, who have to get us, help us get airborne, and then once we're airborne, uh, keep us flying safely. Um, we have the, the whole team of Boeing contracted maintenance, and they get the jet ready, of course, and they, you know, send us on our way. It's amazing to see that all come together and see what a big footprint it takes. For an aircraft like this, that's really a three-person crew with two pilots and a boom operator, the background to testing that actually comes down to thousands and thousands of people making sure that each test mission executes in the right way. Continue on with part two as we discover the complexity of flight tests with receiver aircraft.